I've really been getting into the gotcha scene in the last couple months. I don't know why really. I started playing Genshin full time back in December. I got every waifu I wanted, spent approximately a thousand dollars between December and now, and have kinda burned out. Which, you know what, my wallet no doubt thanks me for. But without Genshin, I've begun to realize that I've run into a, a bit of an issue. What do I play now? What do I want to play? moving into the future. Is there anything at all even worth looking forward to? The answer to that, well, is the purpose of this video, really. Quick shout out to my patrons over on Patreon, by the way. Since this channel is not monetized, every patron counts. Today, I wanna go over the best upcoming gacha games in 2022. Games that are either launching or will have a playable version available in some capacity. These are games that I am most excited for, that I have narrowed down out of what seemed like hundreds. If at least one of these are unable to get you excited, then this'll probably be a pretty crappy year for you, no doubt. I do wanna note though, that most of these games do have pre-registration pages available, which I'm going to include links to down in the description and the pinned comment below for those of you that want to go ahead and try them out when they're available. Now let's go ahead and jump in. We're gonna be tackling this list alphabetically, starting with Ether Gazer. Ether Gazer is a gorgeous anime RPG developed by Yangshi, the very same team behind the incredibly popular Azure Lane. This is an interesting direction for them. While both Azure Lane and Ether Gazer do share the same style of game, a level-based mission-oriented RPG, they have completely different graphical styles, and Ether Gazer specifically utilizes a full action combat system akin to something like Punishing Grey Raven. I guess if we were to compare this to anything, it'd honestly be Punishing Grey Raven or Honkai Impact. Next, Arknight's Enfield. Arknight's Enfield is, as you'd expect, set within the Arknight's universe and shares the very same developer, Hypergriff. Where Arknight's is a, a type of tower defense game, Arknight's Enfield is going to be a completely open world anime RPG. Everything about Enfield is going to be a step in the complete opposite direction with, as noted, an open world, an action combat system, the ability to take multiple different characters with you out into the world. This is easily one of the games that I am most eager to try as I've been playing Arknights for the last month without missing a single day. Code Mirage is a gorgeous upcoming anime RPG that is being developed by NetEase and published by PM Studio. Upon initial inspection, I was under the impression that it was going to be an action RPG, but it does seem as though it could potentially be a turn-based RPG if some of the gameplay that I've seen is to be believed. Little footage has been revealed thus far, but the game seems to be set in a large world with players capable of exploring a massive city, dungeons, and more. It seems like it'll also feature multiplayer functionality, allowing you to group up and participate in dungeons, guild battles, and arenas with other players. Counterside has actually been available in Southeast Asia for a little while now, but is finally launching globally, with players being able to play it fully in English this month actually. This game is from Zilong Games, the same team behind Goddess of Genesis and Langrisser, which really doesn't inspire the most hope for me personally, but the game itself looks too good to not be excited for. Not only is it a great looking anime RPG, but its combat looks ridiculously flashy and over the top, which I get, might not be the most appealing to everyone, but I love having my screen absolutely cluttered with flashy effects. Crystal of Atlan is actually a game that I've covered a couple different times as VI Games, the developers behind the title, have yet to officially confirm what genre this game falls under. Is it an MMO? Is it an open world RPG? Well, it's open world, that much we can be certain of. We see players navigating around large open areas. We see some great looking action combat. Combat that doesn't actually seem to be automatically locking onto targets, I might add, which means that this game might require actual skill, actual aim, actual focus. Something that many games on mobile devices just, well, don't, much to my dismay. Dust White Forbidden Area, also known to many players as Project Snow, is an anime RPG third person shoot shooter, an, an, anim, an anime RPG TPS, a, a TPS RPG. Honestly, 
you know what, it's a, a headache trying to come up with an accurate acronym for that game. Regardless, Dust White Forbidden Area is a game developed by Dian Lee Studio and features some of the best graphics, at least pertaining specifically to the character models of any game in this list. It's stunning, the character movements are fluid, everything about this game looks and feels ridiculously high quality, even the action combat, which as noted, is of the third person shooter variety. Echoes of Mana is the latest mana game in a franchise that Square Enix has been developing for more years than I have been gaming. The game features a relatively traditional level-based world, but a narrative that is probably more compelling than what we're typically used to. JRPGs, they tend to excel in one area, the story. They might not look the best, they might not play the best, but they always tell a story that leaves me enthralled, that leaves me captivated. The Mana series is absolutely no different. With a fairly simple yet polished looking combat system, top tier selection of voice actors, and some absolutely adorable looking graphics, this right here is a must play. X Asterisk is a gorgeous anime RPG from Hypergriff. Yeah, the same Hypergriff that develop Arknights and are in the process of developing Arknights Enfield. X Asterisk is a 3D turn-based RPG set on a large alien planet. It's unconfirmed whether or not the world itself is going to be completely open and explorable or will be level-based or mission-oriented, but from what we've seen in terms of world exploration and character movement, this game is going to be one of the highest quality releases of the year. This game is beyond stunning and brings the quality of a console RPG to handhold devices. Everyone should know what Honkai Star Rail is, right? But you know what, for the uninitiated, this is Hoyoverse's new anime RPG set within the Honkai Impact universe. Unlike Honkai Impact, however, which is an instant mission-based RPG, Star Rail is I guess more akin to Genshin Impact. Like, it, it isn't fully open world, but it does offer players a kind of like a, a semi-instant, semi-open world with plenty of large environments to run around and explore. Unlike the two aforementioned RPGs, which utilize some of the best action combat the genre has to offer, Star Rail is also going to feature a turn-based combat system. Admittedly, this game looks incredibly polished, and it's interesting seeing Hoyovers take their games in a new direction, given how much success they have had with the formula they've been using up until this point. Nightingale is an anime RPG developed by Billy Billy Games. And before this, I actually didn't even know that Billy Billy Games was a thing, but I mean, you know what, here we are. Very little is known about the game at this juncture, as we've really only had a, a single trailer released and have yet to see any real in-game footage, but the character models look absolutely stunning. I'm hoping that they opt to include an action combat system because I feel a game with these specific graphics would really benefit from a fast, fluid combat system, kind of like Honkai or Punishing Grey Raven, but I guess turn-based combat would work if that's the route they opt to go. Hopefully we get a full in-game trailer or some type of in-game footage in the near future. You guys gotta be living under a rock to not know what Nikkei, the goddess of victory is. Nevertheless, for the handful of you that don't, this is a gorgeous new uh, a hot girl game from Shift Up. The same people behind Destiny Child and the same character designer for Blade and Soul and Magna Carta. Nikkei's more of a... Uh, hands-off kind of game. You deploy your really, really hot waifus. They engage enemies in battle and you do to have, admittedly, a, a modicum of control over them, but you're supposed to be using your hands for other things. Uh, on the one hand, to hold your phone, and with the other, well, <laughs> they don't call this a hot girl game for nothing, I guess. Literally, it, its purpose, much like Destiny Child, is to get your adrenaline pumping, and not from a strenuous workout. Or, you know what, maybe, maybe it is from a strenuous workout. Oh god, either way, this is a game that has no open world that instead employs levels, having players clear them one after the other, shooting their way through a plethora of different enemies. 
Project Arathel is a gorgeous new upcoming anime RPG developed by Yulgan Global. I've never been a fan of card games really, for whatever reason I always end up just comparing them to Yu-Gi-Oh! But Project Arathel utilizes a card-based, turn-based action combat system in a way that left me highly intrigued. The game seems like a traditional RPG. There are levels, you clear content through said levels. I don't believe there's a large open world to explore, but you know what? I could be mistaken. Admittedly, there isn't a whole lot of footage available for the game outside of combat and some basic gameplay, but this is definitely something that I am keeping an eye on. Reverse 1999 is one of the most stylish upcoming games that I've seen to date. This is absolutely stunning. It has a full English dub and some of the most cinematic environments and character designs in the genre. Blue Pock, Blue, Blue Poch, Pock, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, Blue Pock, the developers have really outdone themselves with this. Reverse 1999 utilizes a turn-based combat system. It features an extensive narrative, perhaps one of the better ones out of the available games in this list, and makes use of a mission-based progression system, meaning that you take missions, you clear chapters. It's, it's actually kind of unusual though that a game only available in Asia right now has a full English dub and one that is as good as is present within Reverse 1999. Man, this is by far my most anticipated gacha game of 2022. I love The Seven Deadly Sins, and knowing that we're getting a fully open world anime RPG to rival Genshin Impact, dude, this cannot come soon enough. The Seven Deadly Sins origin is developed by Netmarvel and is actually one of several games currently in development. It utilizes a fluid action combat system with characters able to recruit familiar characters found from within the franchise and new ones that are made specifically for this game and utilizes them in combat. And around the environment as well. The world is completely open and filled with areas both new and old that you'll no doubt recognize. It'll feature a narrative that takes from the source material and at the same time expands in its own direction to keep things unique from stagnating. This is perhaps the largest budget game with the highest potential that I've seen in years. Much like the Seven Deadly Sins origin, solo leveling is one of the games being developed by Netmarble. Based on the popular webtoon, Netmarble are bringing the game to life in the form of an anime RPG. Players will be able to recruit and utilize characters found throughout the franchise in stunning, fast-paced action combat. The world, however, does not seem to be large or open, but instead, it looks like you'll have the ability to pursue the main story via missions and chapters, clearing regions by going into instanced encounters. I've never read the webtoon, actually, you know what, I've never read a webtoon ever. I didn't even know what a webtoon was before I saw the trailer for solo leveling, but after watching the trailer footage, I'm gonna be honest, this looks absolutely sick. Tower of Fantasy is the only gacha MMORPG in this list, and is developed by Hada Studio. This is an MMO that I have been hyping for two years now, and for good reason. While it has had its issues within China, it's impossible to deny that not only does this game look gorgeous, but it plays even better. Sure, there are better looking games in this list, there's no contesting that opinion, but larger scale MMOs like Tower of Fantasy typically suffer from reduced graphics and less stellar gameplay. Given that this is a large open world title with endless content to consume, coupled with a, a smooth action combat system and the ability to play with groups of other players, yeah, there's no arguing that this is going to be one of the better games to play. And the global beta is actually this month. Finally, Under Oath is an anime RPG developed by Billy Billy Games, much like Nightingale. This game definitely looks nowhere close to being as good as half the games included, but at the same time, provides something that's different to, to set itself apart, I guess, from its competition. It has an overworld that allows players to actively navigate moving from region to region. It isn't an open world, sure, but it's different to merely selecting a mission from a screen and then deploying units to it. 
Combat takes place in smaller, instanced encounters, and has players select between a variety of different abilities, requiring a level of participation that really isn't always present in mobile games. And while it doesn't look as good as other games, I noted that at the beginning of this segment, I still feel as though it's unique enough and high quality enough to warrant actually playing. And that's, uh, wow, that's a whew, really long video, holy crap. I guess we should end this, right? If you're not an RPG player and I don't know, you're more of an MMO player, I got a list you might be interested in this video on screen right now.